Okay, so this is going to be a very consolidated RET screen overview. And when you open up RET screen, we get to this first page. And this first page is the start menu. And what I did is I set up these values. We're going to do a solar thermal install. So you put your project name, who's doing the preparation, and then we're going to choose a heating. We're going to choose the technology, which is solar thermal. And so let's turn it back to solar thermal. So solar thermal, which is solar water heating. Then we're going to choose the analysis type. There are two types, a very simple method that if you look down here, you see start, energy model, and tools. We're going to want to choose model two. And by choosing model two, you're going to see a lot more detail be pulled up onto the screen. And then this is a key point. We're going to want to show settings. And when we show settings, we're going to want to set it to English, currency is dollar, and units of measure is imperial. Some of us will have the defaulted settings of metric. For us, it's going to be easier to deal with in the imperial units. That is our foots, inches, pounds, etc. And then what I did is I selected the site location reference and the data that's associated with that. Then you can set your climate data location and you can see how I set up the United States Central Illinois region and then I converted these all to Fahrenheit. So this is all straightforward, okay? There's nothing difficult. There are other videos out online that show us how to do that, but I'm going to assume that we know how to select our city, our state, and the location where this site is going to be located. So that's going to show us the data and the data is by month what the annual air temperature and all the relative humidity is across that time. So once we get that done, we're now going to go to the energy model. And the energy model is going to be this screen. We're going to want to select the hot water, not swimming pool. This is going to be a home, and I'm going to choose house. Then I'm going to choose the number of occupants. There are four people in there. Technically, there is a fifth person that's living here, but the child is less than two years old, so we're not going to consider them just yet in this particular homeowner's example. And we're going to say that they're living in this house 100% of the time. So that means it's not a rental unit where it's maybe just in the summer months or just the winter cabin getaway type of thing. And then we're going to select typically about 20 gallons of hot water per person per day. And so the estimated hot water usage according to RET screen is about 63. And we're going to up that just a little bit. We're going to make it 80 just to be on the safe side. Now we can make some of these values change as to what we need it to be, but we're going to leave it at 80. And then what we're going to say is, well, what can we do to keep the hot water hot? And I think the, a good example is maybe about 115 degrees. So let's keep it at 115 degrees. And then the operating days per week is seven days. So the base case is without a solar thermal system and the proposed case in this column right here is with a solar thermal system. So we're going to select those. We're going to leave it set to formula and the incremental initial cost. This value right here gang is going to be roughly $150 per square foot of collector. Typically, for the state of Illinois where we're at, that value is going to be about one to one. That means if I have an 80 gallons of hot water storage, I should have 80 square foot of collector to heat that water up. So basically 80, if I were to take 80 square foot, which is the same as the 80 gallons, times $150, which is the typical install cost, I am looking at a real incremental cost of $12,000. The reason I put 5259 was this was the cost it cost me to make this install because I didn't have labor and I had some of the pieces and I was able to acquire it. So this value is relatively low. A typical homeowner that we're doing an install for would be about $12,000. we are going to fix this to the south. So that means this solar location is going to be pointed due south at a fixed slope of 60 degrees. The reason I chose 60 was the fact that I wanted to do latitude plus 15 degrees. And if you do latitude plus 15 degrees, my location here is 40 degrees plus 15 means I have a latitude of 55 degrees. I wanted to go slightly higher and the reason for it is I'm going to oversize my system just a touch and use a little bit of that heat to offload in my home. Certainly not going to be a tangible difference in the grand scheme of life between 55 degrees and 60. But I wanted to capture as much of that winter heat as I possibly could. So I set the slope to 60 degrees and when it was all said and done I hit 59 degrees instead of 60. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm satisfied with that. The azimuth here is going to be zero degrees due south will be considered zero degrees in our solar thermal system. So if I wanted it to be a little bit off by 10 degrees to the west, that would be a plus 10 degrees. If I want to go to the 10 degrees east, it would be a minus 10 degrees. So now that we have that, now we're going to look at what type of collector 
that I'm going to use. What we're going to do is we're going to type glazed or unglazed. In this type we're going to type glazed and then we're going to go and choose. Now this is an old, old system here. What I would correctly do is I would click on the C database list and so for example I would have a Stiebel Eltran. So I would go to manufacturer, Stiebel Eltron and I would put that data in there with Stiebel Eltron and that sold 25. And then I would insert that and I'd hit OK and that data would be entered into here. The data that I'm using is from a very old system, still quite relevant, totally fine and functioning, and I found the values that were here. But if I did the population base from the product database, it would pump those data into here. So this would be automatically set. Now according to RetScreen, it's going to say, hey, you want to see two of these modules to offload. I personally built my system with five, and that meant I had a total collector space of 135 square foot, and that meant I needed a tank of about 132. I actually have a tank of 200 gallons. What that means is I have a total of five collectors, and I now need to put some loss in there. This miscellaneous loss is going to be for the energy as it losses as it's running. This doesn't really include shading and some other things, so I'm going to just up this guy to say about you usually do two percent per module and so that's what we have there and then what we have around here after that is some other data and we're gonna get to that data in just a second